This is Bill Arman, the co-founder of the Harvest Group, and I serve as head harvester for the West Coast. Welcome, and this session is going to be on the leadership series. This is where Ed LaFlon, my partner, and I ask key leaders in the industry some really good questions. Actually, they're questions that you guys ask us all the time. So this week, the question is, what are the three best practices that people should be practicing out there? That's what we've asked the leaders. When we come back after the session, we'll share some more information with you and ask you a few key questions. Reviewing your financials, uh, coaching and mentoring your, your team members, and um, in our company, we do management meetings on a regular basis every week. Uh, it brings the team together and uh, it allows us to understand where, where, you, where we are uh, and it helps us to achieve our goals. Build a, build a great team, hire the, hire the best people, um, training, and probably the, the other part of it is, you know, build processes that um, you can repeat over and over. Business planning, number one thing, should take uh, time out every year and do a, a, not just a budget, but a business plan. I think uh, during that business planning, process you should get your key employees involved in all aspects of the business planning not just their particular section I think that they should be involved in the whole thing so they understand the needs and wants and the challenges that some of their colleagues are going to be facing throughout the year I think that every company uh, should train their staff to empower them to be able to do their job the best that they can and then uh, from that you need to, to measure results and follow up with your employees uh, and give them the feedback that they deserve to be the best that they can be. Making sure that uh, you treat your customers and your, client, your clients uh, fairly, uh, that you are able to build uh, good relationships uh, and uh, you do the same with your uh, employees, uh, you build a good solid team, um, and you help other people grow. Number one best practice is all around communication, and um, I think that that if um, if there's really good communication and uh, you share a, a vision of where the company is, your vision of where the company is going to go, and you and you allow them to participate in contributing to that vision, then you get everybody on board and, and aligned going the same direction. Um, I think that that um, a culture of trust and belief in people is incredibly important. And, um, you know, if people think that they're uh, not being second-guessed, then um, it's going to allow them to, to, um, to not worry about you know, maybe what somebody else is, is thinking and it, it's going to allow them to play uh, at the top of their game. And I also think that, you know, if you want to have a world-class company or, or a great company, you need to, to not worry about mistakes that are, are being made. I think if, uh, if, I think that to the point of, of, you know, a mistake could almost be celebrated as somebody who is willing to take the risk so long as, as they learn from it. I mean, there, there's a lot to be gained from a mistake, um, and there, there's a lot to be appreciated and recognized by the person who, who did make the mistake. If it was something stretching and, and they were willing to go out, of, out on a limb for the company, that speaks well of the owner, of the business philosophy, and it speaks volumes about the person you have in the role. You know, I think, first of all, I, and this is an overused word, but I think fairness, treating their employees in a fair manner. Uh, I think that's very important. I think that's good for the morale of the company, and I think that's good for, you know, the uh, you know, leadership to uh, present to their, their employees to uh, move forward in their careers. Having a good strategic plan, making sure that that is put together at the right time, making sure it's used as a, something that the company can follow so they know where you're going. Uh, the second one is having the right people in the right places and just being able to uh, bring them along as time comes on. Make sure there's people that mentor them, make sure there's people that are uh, willing and able to teach them as they grow. The, uh, having the financial knowledge of running a company, 
that's not an easy thing to, to, to catch and uh, the financials and making sure the P&Ls are aligned and making sure you're making money at the end of the week, end of the month, end of the year. That's what business is in one respect. So just knowing, knowing how to work financials into your company. Boy, those were some pretty good best practices, weren't they? So let's kind of review some of the ones we've heard about. Coaching and mentoring, financials, tracking and measuring your financials, giving feedback to your employees and with your customers as well. Learn from mistakes, I love that one. Don't think of it as such as a mistake, but as an opportunity for your company to be learning. So those are just some of the examples that we reviewed in this session with our leadership series. Now I wanna ask you a couple questions. I always like to do this. What's the best practices that you're currently practicing? If you're not practicing some of the best practices we've talked about here, what should you be practicing? And what are you gonna be doing uh, to tune some of the ones you have already in place? Okay, this is Head Arbiter Bill Arman. We'll see you at the next leadership series.